Thank you, Daniel's uh, excellent presentation. Uh, lithium resources, lapidolite has been one of the main uh, lithium raw materials uh, for lithium carbon producers. Uh, comparing with the spot mean and brine, uh, there are many doubts about the lapidolite uses. Uh, today, uh, Mr. Xiong Wei from Texas uh, and I will have a t give a, us a talk about the lapidolite situation in China. Uh, just like the cost of using lapid light of to produce lithium salts and uh, its supply outlook. Okay. Uh, in March, my colleague and I are quite lucky. We have a trip to the uh, in the uh, to the hub of lapid light in Jiangxi Province, Yichun. Uh, in the hub, we have saw uh, in-person local uh, lapid light mining and the processing. Uh, you can see the uh, largest uh, uh, lapid light for, for, for mining site uh, from the top picture, and uh, some stops of lapid light concentrates uh, at one local producer. Um, China has uh, diversified resources of lithium, uh, extracting lithium from its brine, uh, lapidite, and spot mean resources. Uh, the latest data uh, show that China has 2 million tons of lithium metal resources. And Qinghai and the Tibet are home to take over 65% uh, of China's lithium resources. Uh, for the hard rock, uh, spot mean resources are located in Sichuan, Xinjiang, and uh, Henan provinces. Uh, lapid light resources mainly located in Jiangxi, Hunan, and Inner Mongolia. Um, now there are 25 lapid light, 22 lapid light uh, mines with mineral rights. Uh, China's lapid light production started in uh, 2015 and uh, developed at a faster pace in 2021 uh, to a new stage, uh, leading lapid light China's lapid light production reaching around uh, 50,000 tons based on a lithium uh, carbonate equivalent. Uh, lapid light production in China, um, uh, China's uh, domestic mine production was around uh, 175,000 uh, tons in 2022, up by 37% year on year. Uh, lapid light supply accounted for 44%, around 78,000 tons, up by 64% year on year. High prices in the past two years uh, accelerated lithium mines development. Um, based on current production technology, uh, uh, from almost all lapid light uh, uh, can be used uh, in to produce the lithium carbonate. Uh, but uh, if for produce the lithium hydroxide uh, in China, there are many co co uh, uh, converters. Uh, they can up upgrade the lithium carbonate, uh, which pr produced from the lapid light. Uh, after the rapid expansion, uh, there are questions like uh, whether the downstream consumers can accept or use the lithium lapid light uh, produced from the lapid light, and uh, how's the quality uh, different uh, from different produ lapid light producers. Uh, now we can we see how the production quality for carbonate produced by lapid light producers in China, according to the standards from the China, China's government, there are only two kinds of the lithium carbonate: just the industrial grade carbonate and the battery grade carbonate. Um, but actually, in the real market, uh, uh, there are three kinds of lithium carbonate: uh, industrial grade carbonate, battery grade carbonate. Another is pre grade carbonate. Uh, for pre-grade battery grade carbonate, it's, it's said um, its lithium containing reaches the national standards for battery grade ca carbonate, where well, some impurities uh, don't align with the national standards. That type of the carbonate is called the pre-battery grade carbonate. Um, in the slide, I listed two companies. Uh, they are, that, that's their test result for their carbonate. Uh, the red bar rep represents the element content doesn't meet the st national standards. Um, producer A actually is a new, new company. They started production uh, late uh, last quarter last year. And uh, producer B is an ex 
experienced producer uh, who have been in the market for many years. Uh, we can see for producer A, continuing, continuing uh, their products cobalt containing for the uh, potassium and the sulfate overpass the standards. Uh, you can see the red bars. And for producer B, all, uh, all elements are reaching the standards ex for, except for the potassium. Uh, well, for both of them, the lithium content is actually higher than 99.5%, higher than the uh, China's national standards. Um, both of their products can be used for lithium-ion batteries. Well, producer A just uh, has started production for around six months. Uh, this is one example showing the technique upgrading uh, can help processors to produce qualified carbonate uh, within a short, short, uh, short period. Um, from our understanding that uh, almost all lithium uh, lapidated producers uh, had been, their products had been widely used in the lithium ion battery productions. According to our research show, uh, this, this showed a top five lapidated lab producers in China. 99% uh, of their products can be used in the lithium ion pr battery production. Among that, 2% are used in the electrolyte, uh, 70, 97 are used in the cathode production. Um, actually, the 70% 70, 70 of them are used in the LFG battery batteries, um, it, uh, energy storage system, and the EVs are the largest to, to applications markets um, for lapid light, accounting for 84%. Um, given the strong demand and uh, for the new energy transition market, more consumers are expected to accept the pit light, especially in China. Um, China's lithium prices started to uh, drop in mid-November last year, uh, but recently we have seen around 20,000 tons increases in the past two weeks. Uh, most partic participants are caring about the rapid light processors production uh, costs. We, are we also investigate uh, on this sector. Uh, Chinese governments uh, are the shareholders for most rapid light mines, which has been started operation in China. The government sends a uh, pricing uh, mechanism to adjust prices for different grading rapid light and the rapid light ores. Um, and when lithium company prices reach different pri reach, reach different prices, um, just like the 1.8% 1. 1. lapid light quantities are always produced from the 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 lapid light mines. Uh, and the producers always have low recoveries uh, when they use this kind of the, just uh, the 1.8% uh, of the lapid light quantities. And the will for two 0.5 lapid light constraints are the normal lapid light uh, constraints in China. Just uh, that's the difference is the lapid light constraints, the lithium containing, lithium oxide containing is much lower than spodumene. Uh, uh, actually, we know the spodumene con containing for the uh, lithium oxide is around 5 to 6 percent in Australia. That's the difference. According to the government pricing, Mechanism, we, we found the price, pricers without mines, just that they purchase, this, this, this processor, the, they purchase lithium lapid light constraints in the market. Uh, integrated processors, uh, uh, we call this, this, they have the mines, they have the mines there, there uh, with the, with the Chinese, Chinese government. Uh, they can produce the 1.8 and the 1, 2.5% such kinds of the uh, lithium lapid light constraints. Uh, their product costs are all below the China's spot prices. Uh, when prices drop to 150,000 yuan per ton, for those processors with, uh, without miners, uh, their product costs are around 120,000 yuan per ton. Integrated producers using 1.8% uh, of lapid light constraints, their product costs are around uh, 100,000 yuan per ton, uh, but uh, we didn't take the financial cost and the profit taking from their mind share shares. Uh, more information about the pilot production, uh, just like the, we will introduce Mr. Xiong to give us a clarify la later. Uh, also, continuous expansion will continue keep their production costs lower. By 2032, we expect China's rapid light production to account for around 14% of global uh, lithium production. 
Uh, now uh, we let's welcome Mr. Xiong from Chexis to give us a presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky, uh, for the invitation. Uh, uh, I'm my first market to speak here. And uh, for the people who know me and know my background, I'm, I'm actually a commercial person. So uh, when first market raised this topic to me and said, can you talk about this technically? OK. I said, uh, I will draw on my over 20 years experience as a commercial person to talk about technical things. So I will try my best. And uh, I, I will speak. Uh, or make, make the best of my English. But if you have any question uh, in English, please ask slowly. Okay, thank you. So, uh, move down like this. Next, okay. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, it's a general explanation of the uh, uh, conversion process by lipid line and compared to spotting. But I mean, before this, uh, I will make, make the answer very, sh uh, very short. So when, uh, when people ask, whether lipidolite is a valid source of lithium supply, I would say uh, it has already happened. It is right now, it's happening. So let me explain uh, what has been, uh, what technical advances have been made in the past, okay? Uh, on the left hand, on the, 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 the brown part, you, you see that's the conversion process of spodumene. So this is what we call the second generation uh, conversion, okay? This is a little bit different from the first generation. When we talk about the first generation of conversion technology, that was in 1990s. So when people, okay, uh, convert spodumene into lithium carbonate first as a finished product, and then uh, as the second step, convert a finished lithium carbonate into hydroxide. But if you remember this, uh, in 1990s, in the middle of 1990s, when SQM entered the market and this, uh, how to say, uh, beat the uh, lithium carbonate price under $2,000 per ton, okay, almost all the converters in China cannot survive. Uh, they cannot compete on the lithium carbonate price against the uh, Salt Lake sourced lithium. So at that time, uh, one major technical uh, improvement has been made. So the, basically, we uh, for the second generation sportman conversion, you see, we convert spot, spodumene directly to hydroxide. And that, uh, historically, uh, hydroxide is, has a premium price compared to uh, carbonate. So this is how the hard rock conversion technology uh, exists, survive, uh, uh, survive the, the, the beat, the heat of the uh, Salt Lake guys, OK? Uh, and uh, on the lipidolite side, OK, so uh, let me put it this way. So it, the, the technology changed from time to time and it's advancing. So in 2019, while, while I was looking at the spec, the spec sheet uh, from a major lipidolite converter, the sulfate content is like uh, 4,000, 5,000 ppm, 0.5, okay? The potassium uh, uh, is like 2,000 ppm, which is uh, far more than the highest maximum Accept, uh, acceptable uh, specification by the cathode companies. But when I look at their uh, materials one year ago, I would say it's pretty good. At least it's good enough for the production of LFP. Maybe they, they, they still need to do some further purification uh, for the uh, LMO, uh, 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 lithium, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, okay, anyway. And uh, for ternary material, they, they still have need to have some further purification. But uh, for LFP, good enough, okay? So it's, it's already battery grade. And uh, in the past, the old technology of conversion the pit light, they add uh, sulfuric acid uh, to the mine, uh, calcinate it together, uh, cal cal calcination first, and then add the acid, I mean, to take the uh, lithium out. But the old technology has a problem. I mean, the aluminum could be uh, uh, dissolved into the, uh, into the solution, and this will cause challenges uh, uh, for the further purification. Aluminum is terrible in solution, okay? 
and uh, also uh, it caused higher uh, loss of lithium into the tanning. Okay, so the new the new one, I think uh, this uh, technology started in about 2018, matured in 2019 and or 20 to 2020. So right now we call this a, a mixed salt calcination. So basically you have uh, you add. Uh, sodium or potassium uh, sulfate. I mean, it's more than one salt, okay? It's a mixed sulfate salt. And also you add some additives. We, uh, this additive is, is try to lock in the uh, fluoride in the mine or and something like that, okay? So these this, uh, additives and they mix it together so and then calcinating it. And the, 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 the calcinating uh, temperature is about uh, a little bit lower than 900 degrees compared to the sporting concentration. It's uh, over uh, 1,100 degrees. So they, they have lower calcination temperature. And uh, by calcination, the, 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 you will have seen the phase change of, of the mine. And it will be uh, molten or melted. And then you uh, break this uh, melted, uh, calcinated uh, ores apart and grind it. And then, uh, so you have small particles, and by uh, leaching, okay, by water, you take the lithium uh, sulfate solution out, and then you have different purification process to get rid of calcium, magnesium, or whatever it is, okay, and uh, uh, then it's a purified uh, lithium solution. Then you have uh, you add the uh, soda ash to, to precipitate the uh, lithium carbonate, and you will have some residue lithium in the solution. You are separate uh, by separate the sodium uh, sulfate, okay? Uh, by either uh, a, a hot uh, a hot separation or by a freezing separation, okay? And then you will have a, a lithium carbonate from the second precipitation and so on. And so this is how we deal with if the purity is not good enough. So uh, we have a typical what we call carbonization process, uh, this, this kind of operation. By carbonization, it means you have, a, 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 say, 98 or 99% uh, uh, high impurity uh, carbonate. You add uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, you, you, uh, you uh, how to say, uh, mix the, uh, the carbonate with water. Okay, you continuously add carbon dioxide. And then you will, what you will get is uh, uh, lithium, okay, LiHCO3, uh, and then this, uh, this, uh, this stuff is not stable. You heat it again, it will change back to lithium carbonate with higher purity. And the impurities like uh, uh, sodium, potassium, and so on will stay in the solution. So basically that's the process, okay? Uh, uh, again, I'm very commercial, so uh, you, you can ask me and you can challenge me if I have something wrong. Okay, so this is some typical estimate or rough estimate of the cost uh, of the pit light conversion compared to spodium. Okay, uh, these numbers might might be a little bit exaggerated by the, the pit light guys. So you see, uh, the pit light guys are mostly I mean newcomers, so they they are always uh, bragging about their company in a, in a rosy way. So they they could tell you a little bit higher than actual recovery and so on, but. Everybody do the same anyway. So, uh, we we'll talk about the, the available, uh, resources of the pit light. So, uh, uh, the pit light grade about 0.3% is already a super quality, uh, raw material in China. So when you, when you look at the mine, which has been planned to be developed by CATL, Guoxuan, and so on, they are talking about 0.2% uh, raw grade, or sometimes you see, even lower, I have seen a possibility study working on 0.16% uh, lithium oxide grade. So that's the difference. And for uh, sporium, typically you have, say, at least around 0.9%, 0 .9%, that's Lamasca, I believe, if my memory is correct. I know even higher, like uh, Pearbar, 1.1, 1.2, or sometimes it can go to 1.4 or 5. So uh, you have different grades, and uh, with the knowledge from the industry, you know the higher grade of fitting material will give you lower cost, higher recovery, uh, and so on, okay? So uh, we will concentrate uh, spodiumine typically to 5.5% uh, plus. 
uh, concentrate. Uh, and in the in the past two years, when the price sold up so high, we can uh, uh, compromise to five percent. And any grade uh, of sporting concentrate below five percent, you'd better mix it with the six percent, the higher grade ones. So that how we deal. That's why Chinese can take four uh, percent sporting from Africa and so on. So they mix it typically. And uh, for the pitolite uh, concentrate, I have. I, recently, I have never heard somebody is using 3% because, uh, because of the higher grade uh, ores have been run out. So right now they are using 0.2 or 0.25% raw grade. And when they concentrate it, it can typically go up to 2% to 2.5%. That's the range, okay, for the pit light concentrate. And talking about the recovery, okay, by all concentration, I think the Australians can do 65%. In Tennyson case, you can do over 70% because of the higher feeding grade. In China, we do uh, flotation. So typically, we believe Chinese concentrators uh, do a better recovery uh, than our Australian peers. So typically, we think Chinese can do 5 or 10% higher in recovery by this flotation, OK? Uh, but for the pit light, because of the lower uh, feeding grade, uh, basically, you. Uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent, and uh, I mean this recovery is not only related to the uh, lithium content, but also related to the, uh, the the size of the particles after grinding, and the, the, uh, whether there's other uh, coexisting uh, metals inside. There are a lot of factors, but generally speaking, I think 65 percent is reachable from to upgrade from 0.2 percent raw to 2 percent uh, concentrate. Okay. And when you come to uh, the cost of concentrate, so that's my estimate, okay, by, so basically it's 100 to 120 RMB from, say, uh, the, the, the raw ores to the concentrate. So if you consume 10 tons of uh, raw ores, that means your cost of concentrate is 1,000 RMB, okay? So that, and by recovery of con conversion, uh, you can see, also see higher recovery in sporting. Uh, typically, say, we need 8%. 8% of uh, sporting concentrate to produce one ton of better grade carbonate. Uh, but for, uh, uh, for the pit light, uh, okay, so there are two different kinds of, uh, am I too technical? I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure, so, okay. I mean, uh, for the pit light, uh, you have two ways. One is the turlocune, okay, turlocune is used because, I mean, you can find a lot of uh, uh, existing kilns, existing second-hand kilns, which used for construction material before. So they can use the old one. And the, you, you can also find the, the rotary kiln, which have uh, higher throughput. And, but the, the, the good thing about turn, turtle kiln is it has higher recovery. So when we talk about recovery, turtle kiln can typically give you over 80% recovery. Rotary kiln, although with a big throughput, maybe only can give you 75%. But I think this number is only for mature uh, who have uh, picked up the learning curve. So for the juniors, the, who, the newcomers, I, I, I believe their recovery should be at least 5% no. low. Okay, that's the word for CATL. <laughs> uh, it's always my joke, CATL. Okay. Nothing, I mean, nothing to offend them. I mean, Okay, so that's the uh, estimate of cost by uh, lithium carbonate, and you have different uh, byproducts. In the pit light conversion, the, the sodium su uh, the, the, the sulfate can be recycled to use, okay? And also you have totally different uh, composition of uh, tannins. For sportumin, you have one ton of uh, good carbonate, two tons of sodium sulfate, and six tons of tannin, which are, you know, are typically sold to the construction material market. And here in the pit life, so if you start from 0.2% raw ores, you need about, uh, theoretically, you will need uh, only eight tons to make 2% concentrated. But taking this 65% recovery, you might need 13 tons of uh, raw ores to make uh, one, ton, one ton of concentrate of 2%, the pit life concentrate. And again, theoretically, you need only like 20 tons. Uh, of two percent concentrate the pit light to make one ton of battery, and but if you only give it seventy percent recovery, it's all all about the mass. So you will need about twenty five tons or sometimes thirty tons of concentrate to make one ton of battery. So by the end of the day, you will use about four hundred tons. Okay, 0.2 percent raw ores to make one ton of. Uh, 
carbonate. So it's, they have very heavy uh, pressure from the, this environment, environmental pressure from uh, the peatland conversion. And that's why the uh, Chinese government has sent a, a, joint, a, a joint inspection group into Jiangxi province to see uh, I mean, the, 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 the environmental impact in, in, in mining, in conversion, and so on, in tanning processing, and so on. Oh, okay, so, and talking about quality. So anyway, uh, I mean, uh, Western people are always concerned about quality or brag about it. Some people try to raise the, their share price and say, okay, we can do a better grade in one step, but to us, no big difference. So from in technical grade to better grade, 5,000 RMB per 10 cost, uh, guaranteed battery grade quality. Okay, so basically no, no big deal. Okay, this, my estimate of the output from the pit light from China is similar to what Vicky has just presented. So uh, last year, so basically, I mean, uh, different companies give a very beautiful uh, financial statement, but I have to deduct uh, the lithium production from, I mean, by this repeat like guys, but the source is actually recycled materials or from Salt Lake, I need to deduct this part. So according to my uh, estimate of the pure repeat light source, uh, it reached like 80 to 85,000 LCE tons last year. And this year, I mean, you will have a, a okay, a, 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 an increase, a big increase, even the price go down. So uh, if the price stayed at uh, 500,000 RMB, as uh, half a year ago, you will see much higher. And this number, 135,000 ton, has been adjusted for the uh, updated price. But it's still, if you view the worldwide output this year, is about 1 million ton LCE, okay? So it's close to 15%. So it's already there, okay? And uh, the maximum, okay, I will talk about this, the, the maximum output we can expect from China, from these low grades, uh, it's about, according to my discussion with uh, my peers in China, uh, 300,000 tons maximum. I think that's what the environmental uh, environment can uh, undertake. Okay. Okay. So uh, I basically I finished uh, my first topic about the the, the, uh, the conversion process of the pit light, and uh, it's always I mean uh, how to say regretful if I I don't talk about the market in front of people. Uh, some people criticize me for being too Bearish, that's the correct word, right? Like a bear looking down, okay? Uh, but seriously speaking, I, I must say, okay, the market price, 150,000 RMB, uh, 20 days ago or two weeks ago, not the bottom yet. So for each bottom, okay, this, this big, big cycle of lithium price, every two or three years, uh, go over again. So uh, in, in the summer, in, in June, uh, uh, 2018, when the price of lithium carbonate uh, was still standing at 160 to 170 thousand, I told my company General Lithium, okay, uh, don't buy Sporting right now. I said it will go down, go down, go down. So I, I, my expectation at that time, I said it will went down below 50 thousand RMB or five. Okay, let me see. Like, let me make the currency calculation. So. One, yeah, 50,000 RMB below that one. And uh, at the actual price, last, the bottom of last, uh, last cycle is 38,000 RMB battery grade from sodium source. And from the Salt Lake and the Peter Light source, it went down to 32,000 RMB, okay? And for this cycle, uh, my pre uh, expectation is, is uh, linked to my cost estimate to the Peter Light guys. I believe um, the people who are, who are at the high end of the pit light conversion, their cost is like cash cost, not including depreciation allocation. The cash cost is about 80 to 90,000 RMB. So I believe this, in this round of uh, price cycle, you, you will see 80 to 90,000 RMB in China. And China is, uh, will have a significant impact on the Western people's expectation where the price would be, okay? So why this happened? So if you look purely at the demand side and the supply side, you have enough lithium. It, if you look at the numbers, I mean, these numbers uh, have been adjusted to deduct the, uh, the over bragging by this uh, beautiful announcement. So this is my actual estimate. And even after this adjustment, you see you have enough supply. Why the price sold up to so high, $80 per kilo? 
in the last two years. So I'm going, that's the, the second topic I'm going to uh, uh, explain to you. So, good. Inventory. I'm going to talk about inventory. I, I believe many people are talking about the inventory, but most of people, I think, might, might underestimate the, the impact of inventory by a large percentage, okay? So uh, we just look at this, uh, uh, this move of inventory. This is just one step in the value chain of uh, batteries, okay? So this is the, uh, S, S represented the sold uh, batteries, uh, power batteries. P means produced, so P is produced, S is sold, I is installed and export, okay? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident in these numbers because the data source is from uh, 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 China Automotive uh, Power Battery Alliance, but a very uh, reliable source. I have tracked their numbers uh, year by year, so reliable source. So you see, and this explains exactly what happened, why the price peaked in the end of the third quarter last year. So. We look at the right hand first. Old compared to produced. So you see, because of the more and more dominance by CATL, the BYD, and this big two, uh, uh, they have a big power to push the uh, OEMs to buy their batteries, which is scheduled to deliver, okay? Uh, but in the end of the fourth quarter, you see uh, they cannot sell anymore because too much inventory is built up in automotive on the OEM side. So the installed to uh, produce is between 50 to 55% uh, throughout the last year. And uh, in the end, in the end, in the fourth quarter, they cannot take this anymore. That, and that's the price, why the price went down last year. So if you are going to speculate or trade uh, according to your uh, short-term, say, uh, court basis uh, forecast of price, I mean, this is, these are the numbers you should watch on. This is very sensitive number. And, okay, uh, you see, the chairman of uh, Guangzhou Automotive, Guangxi, blamed us, uh, lithium guys, for speculating, for, I mean, push the price up. It's not our fault. It's CATL's fault. It's the battery company's fault. It's their bad planning. What the cost problem is their bad planning? I don't think there's any reason, if you look at it purely from the supply or the, the demand side, the price should go up to 600,000 RMB per ton. But uh, you see, because of their uh, over optimi uh, optimistic and uh, they are, they push on to, to, uh, to purchase the material. They, they take too much material in quarter two and quarter three. That's why they drive the price up. Okay. So this is a very sensitive number. And if you look at the, the, the low percentage of sales of batteries in quarter one, if you remember in China, the price withdraw from nearly 500,000 to 430 uh, for about one month. So that's, exactly reflect what's going on. And if you look at, uh, okay, let's explain how the price move. And you look at the left side, okay, explain. It, this is, some of the inventory are the necessary, the safety stock is not for speculation. So you see, even the, in the uh, uh, best selling years, uh, in 2020 and 2021, you see the, the sales to production uh, ratio is about 85%. So you times 12 months, that means the inventory sitting in the battery companies is like uh, one half to two months, okay? So that's explain, just give you a, a snapshot of what's sitting in the value chain. So you putting all, all this together. If we are talking about the purely supply and the demand side, the, the sales of automotive, the, the supply from mining side, okay, it's, you have enough lithium supply. But we are talking about lithium chemical price. So we need to move all the, the numbers adjusted to the interface between the cash of the company and the lithium chemicals. And then you see a totally different picture. Uh, the, the, I mean, I agree with the... Uh, uh, localization or a rebalancing of uh, different parts of, of the world, supplying uh, to different customers. But uh, unfortunately, right now, you see all the uh, lithium materials either move from South America to China. Well, the sea transportation, it will, it will take like 50 to 60 days. And you take, take consideration of the, uh, book, uh, the booking of ships, 
the custom clearance, the safety stock. So it's very safely to say, okay, the incremental part of the demand the, of the supply will arrive into the market, into the, the, the central interface four months later. And then if you look at the downstream, okay, uh, all the inventories, the batteries, the produ uh, production lead time, the safety, safety inventory, I mean, the testing time, all these kind of things. And again, cancelled from China, okay, hydroxide from China to Korea and uh, Japan. And uh, at least 20% of the uh, cancelled is moving also either from China to Korea or Korea back to China. And the battery packs move to the OEMs in Europe, in the US. All these kind of long supply chain. So my estimate, the, the demand will arrive six months uh, uh, earlier. So by this, that's why you see a tight supply and demand situation in the last two years. And this number uh, 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 fit, match my, uh, my number on the castle production and the material, the, the lithium material, how much will be uh, consumed, matched very perfectly, okay. So uh, this year in 2023 and 2024, uh, you will see uh, a surplus uh, of lithium material by about 50,000 tons, generally speaking, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the interface between cathode and lithium chemicals. But I mean, don't estimate this, uh, underestimate the, the impact of these 50,000 tons, okay? Uh, I mean, uh, when the price is going up, you see 2% or 3% uh, uh, deficit or, or, or a lack of material can cause the price doubled, uh, uh, tripled, and so on. So these uh, 50,000 tons of LCE will uh, surplus uh, of LCE will drive the price up. Right, already right now, you see it's uh, about 200,000 RMB by battery grade. But uh, after the, uh, I mean, the, the, the quarter two, when, the, uh, when people's illusion about the rebound of production on the cathode side and the, and the battery side, well, when it faded again, the price, I believe, will come back, come, to, come down again. So anyway, uh, this is my estimate of uh, the supply demand situation and the recaps are, the pit lights are already there. So uh, I think it's good quality battery, okay. Uh, it might not be enough for uh, 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 Ni, okay, the other uh, small cell, uh, small cells for uh, electrics, but electronics, but good enough, I mean, for the LF, LFP material. Uh, maximum uh, volume of uh, supply is about 300,000 tons. Uh, uh, the cost of lithium from the pit light are in the high end, but good enough to survive this cycle. The people who, who need to worry about themselves are the people who has, uh, Secure the lithium asset, the lipidolite asset at a high price, at a low grade in China, in Jiangxi province. These are the guys who should worry about this, okay? Uh, and the, the last two points, inventory play an important part and the price will face pressure. So that means typically when we see a big cycle, it's, it's not a surprise the, the price go, go down to one third or one fourth of the peak price. No, no surprise to us. So that's my view. Thank you. Any questions?